Welcome to our Ash Wednesday worship with Plymouth Park United Methodist Church. My name is Marcus Womack. I'm the pastor here. We're glad to worship with you today from wherever you are gathered from. Due to inclement weather, we are having to be pretty flexible with how this service has come together. We had hoped to offer drive through ashes and we had hoped to offer you these at-home ashes for you to use in some time of worship together, but knowing that many folks are without power or without internet, we figured we would offer this pre-recorded service as an alternative in addition to sending you an at-home liturgy where your household can share in this holy day however is best for you. As we've gathered from all the places we've gathered, we join together in this new season of Lent in this journey towards the good news of Easter. Will you pray with me as we begin this time? Creator God, there is a rumbling in us that won't let go. It stirs in us like the wind stirs leaves, inviting us to move, drawing us forth. When we're quiet, we know that rumble is the Holy Spirit. Dancing love awake in us. So we're here, and we're still, and we're quiet. And on this first day of Lent, we're asking you to draw near. As we hear your scripture read aloud, open the door for us to move. Invite us in. Rumble us awake. Gratefully, we pray. Amen. As we've gathered the at-home liturgy, we did not include any music, but I will lead us in a song. It comes to us from the Tizay community in France and in a tradition where there are often repetitive words that help us move closer to the Spirit. And I invite you, even if you're unfamiliar with this song, to join in as you feel comfortable. The words are, Bless the Lord my soul. Bless God's holy name. Bless the Lord my soul who leads me into life. Bless the Lord my soul and bless God's holy May our hearts, minds, and lives be open to the Word of God for us in Scripture today from Genesis and the beginning of life, chapter 3, in the second part of verse 19. From dust you came, and to dust you shall return. This is the Word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? God of love and God of grace, this is your time and we are your people. 
Open our hearts, our minds, and our lives to your presence that we would receive your word and respond with all that we are. Amen. So today I want to offer words that I have written in a devotion that has been sent to your email and also shared with our youth group as they begin their devotions for this journey. It's an expression of my kind of annual struggle as I face this season and it feels particularly poignant as this pandemic started during Lent last year and in some ways it feels like Lent never really ended from 2020 and so here we are. If I can be honest with you sometimes I struggle to be ready for Ash Wednesday. I was growing up in the church and often it felt like we needed to be eager and excited to begin Lent with the lists of the things, you know, what you're going to give up, what you're not going to do, the ways you need to confess. In a lot of ways, it's a willingness to face the struggles of life, a willingness to sacrifice something and grow in that preparing and culmination towards the good news of Easter. I think it's supposed to show maturity. And while I'm on board with Growing in self-discipline and self-awareness in the coming 40 days, the start of this journey sometimes feels difficult. Can I just name it out loud with you? I find it pretty uncomfortable to stare my mortality in the face. With that invitation, you know we, we say it, it was just mentioned from our scripture Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. In contrast, I've come to really enjoy the season of Advent. There is so much preparation for incarnation and new life. It's this invitation at Advent to make space in my heart and in my life and in my world for new things to occur. I like that challenge of looking in my heart and looking around me in the world to try and be surprised by joy and peace. But it's a pretty different story beyond Advent to walk with Jesus after his arrival into the fullness of his human experience. Ash Wednesday and Lent, they ask me to be open not only to joy and hope, but to also stand amid the suffering and the doubt. These things come without resolution and answer too often. So today I'm asked, am I willing and ready to face the dissonance of living and walk with it? Some of this unease for me is definitely rooted in my longing to think of myself and truly all of creation as no longer bound by sin or brokenness. That the good news would be that good. I like to think of each of us as endowed with original blessing in the image of God as opposed to being cursed with original sin. However, I look in the mirror and around the world and I'm painfully aware of the presence and power of sin. So, even if the eternal work of salvation is wrapped up in the fathomless depths of love brought by God in Christ, the daily weight of sin sits uncomfortably just beneath the surface of my skin and just beyond the reach of my fingertips with the sufferings of my neighbor. Ash Wednesday beckons that the shame and the incompletion for them to come to the surface and be dealt with publicly. The coming season asks me to be honest about my pride and admit that I don't do what I want to do. Instead, I do the thing that I hate. In that sense, Ash Wednesday is a reckoning. 
I have to admit my limitations, my mistakes, and be willing to see and name the ramifications of this reality. People get hurt. The things we build will fade. The desires that so often drive us will not ultimately fulfill us. When left to our own devices, dust will be the great equalizer. I don't take that realization lightly. The dust feels pretty heavy if I think about it too long. So, I need to take a deep breath today. And hesitantly take those first steps into this season of Lent that's ahead. I know the dust isn't the end of the story, thank God. But we haven't reached the end of the story yet. So, in the meantime, I will receive the ashes today. Yes, even in this different way. I gotta name my need for healing and wholeness. That's the root of what salvation literally means, by the way. I gotta see where my world needs those things, that healing and that wholeness. And maybe sing a song of the end of the story that we hope for. To mark the time in between. It's like that prophet Bruce Springsteen said, everything dies, baby, that's a fact, but maybe everything that dies someday comes back. May it be so. May it be so in this season where so much is asked of us and we wonder, is there any light or any, any, any hope at all at the other side of this? May the ash and the dust mark us for the hope that our lives are meant for something more. And that lies ahead of us. And may our lives be committed to co-creating that hope with our God through this forging season of Lent and the grace we receive through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Normally in our response, we would transition in this time to receive the ashes. And that may look differently for you. Maybe it's time to pause the video and uh, maybe find some ash or some kind of charcoal. Maybe you got some cosmetics with charcoal in them. Or maybe you can go to your garden and beneath the snow dig out some dirt or some soil. Maybe you got to go to that bookcase and find some dust there in your home. Something to remind us that we're dust and the dust will return. And while we consider that dust and those ashes today, I want to invite us to reflect for just a moment. This day is meant to remind us of our humanity. And maybe it's good to reflect before we hastily jump into the sign and symbol of the season. We invited you through the at-home liturgy, and I think it's appropriate now, too, to take a few minutes and maybe make a list of what that humanity feels like. To honestly and intentionally reflect on maybe five or ten challenges you're struggling with right now. Naming deeply and purposefully how messy and complicated life can be. I know in my own heart there are those things that are hard or feel heavy. I invite you in a moment. I'm going to play a song that says, Take, O oh, take me as I am. Summon out what I shall be. Set your seal upon my heart and live in me. It seems very fitting for me to begin this season. So maybe write down these challenges you're facing. Maybe on a piece of paper nearby or in a journal or on a note in your iPhone. And think to the core beneath those things that uh, underlying emotion, like maybe for me I would want to say I'm challenged and feel the weight of being busy, but underneath that I'm maybe confessing I overcommit myself because I worry what others will think or think I'm selfish if I say no. For example. Name those challenges, those confessions, and offer them to God. This is a time of prayer. As you take this moment, ask God for forgiveness for the things you can control and for grace for the things you can't. I invite you in this time to breathe out, breathe out the worry 
and the weight and the fear and the shame and the guilt and breathe in the grace and the hope and the forgiveness and the peace. May this time be a sign of our commitment to that journey of grace. Let us reflect together now. Take, oh, take me as I am. Summon out what I shall be. Set your seal upon my heart and live in me. Take, oh, take me as I am. Set your seal upon my heart and live in me. Take, go, oh, take me as I am. Summon out what I shall be. Set your seal upon my heart and With all of those reflections, those challenges, the weight of this life, I pray you know you are not alone. And we turn now to be marked by that challenge and by that weight, but also for that hope that God is with us and we are never alone. So I invite you now, if you are able to find some of that dirt or dust or ash that's available to you, and know that if you don't have those things available, the blessing far surpasses the symbol. This is not a sacrament. This is a symbolic act of repentance. And your heart and attention toward God matter more than any outward sign or symbol will ever matter. But I invite you to take that sign of impermanence and hold it here intentionally as we offer these words of the poet and artist Jan Richardson that bless this dust. All those days you felt like dust, like dirt, as if all you had to do was turn your face toward the wind and be scattered to the four corners, or swept away by the smallest breath as insubstantial. Did you not know what the Holy One can do with dust? This is the day we freely say we are scorched, this is the hour we are marked by what has made it through the burning. This is the moment we ask for the blessing that lives within these ancient ashes. That makes its home inside the soil of this sacred earth. All those days you felt like dust, like dirt. So let us be marked not for sorrow, and let us be marked not for shame, and let us be marked not for false humility or for thinking we are less than we are, but for claiming what God can do within the dirt, within the dust, within the stuff of which the world is made, and the stars that blaze in our bones, and the galaxies that spiral inside the smudge we bear. Now I'll take this dust and make the sign of the cross like so. 
remembering that we are dust and to dust we will return. Repent and believe the gospel, friends. Go forth in Christ's name to transform existence, to bring consolation to the desperate, hope to the hungry and homeless, reconciliation to a community and world divided. And in Christ's name, find a cause you can live for, a self you can live with, and a Redeemer for whom you can die. Go in peace. Amen.